this is a basic use of how to use Onyx Poster Shop to print something to a flatbed printer. I'm going to be printing this KKP Blueprint logo. What you got to do is put it into a folder on your computer and then go into the Poster Shop and then select your printer, which we are using the Vanguard VKM. Select that, then click Open. In this menu, you will then collect, select the file you're going to print. Uh, we're not going to be using any quick sets, just use the default. And then you're going to want to open it up in Job Editor, so you want to make sure this is checked. And then click Open. With it open in the Job Editor, you now have some options to use. You can use your media group. Ours is just the VKM. Uh, media name, so if you have a, let's say, a white printer, you might just have your color profile, then your white one. We just use this test paper CMYK plus white. Here in color management, it has our profiles. You have multiple different profiles you can use, which can change the color. Overall, we just use profiles on unless something needs changed. Uh, down here, you can use a contour cut selection to choose your cutter. Uh, everything here is different cutters. We use Zoom Cut Center. And then after this, you're all good. Now we'll go to Preview and Size. Here in Preview and Size, it kind of shows you what size the image is, how you can crop it down and rotate or whatever. Uh, so for us, this is a 3.8 by 2.05 double check these sizes with what the file size is. I have seen it shrink down before. Just make sure it's the right size before you continue. Here is the crop size you can do so you can crop this down. Say I don't want this uh, business solutions here and I just want the actual logo. I can say oh that might be maybe 2.8 inches. Oh wrong one. 3.8 uh, one inch. I can put that there. Oh, that's not really right. Or maybe if I move it down, it might be. So I can use X or keep that at zero. Use Y to say move it down by 0.5. As you can see, this is your crop area, which moved down. I can manually move it by clicking and dragging it to where I want it. And another way you can crop in this is come up here and make sure this crop tool is selected. And with that selected, you can drag on these dashed lines to where you want it. So I can crop into the sides of what I want. And once you're done with that, you just click Apply. And once this preview is rendered, you can see it's now got cropped down. I don't want to actually do this to this job, so what I can do is come over here and print the, um, press this original PS slash PDF settings and apply that, which will revert it back to the original image we had. Down below the crop size is the rotating tool. You can rotate it 90, 180, or 270 degrees. Let's rotate it 90 degrees, and then once you click that, just click apply, and you can see it happen in the preview. It has now been rotated 90 degrees. Another thing you can do here is you can also, um, mirror this. With the mirroring, with that on, as you can see this little sample cow here, it flips the image so it's a mirror image. You use this for printing on the back of anything. Good example is acrylic. Back printed acrylic, so when they flip it to the front, you can um, see it's in a forward direction. I'm gonna put all that back to zero, call it good. Once you're done with preview and size, overall you're going to be going to this finishing tab. In the finishing tab, you can add bleeds, you can add um, a trim box, um, fold marks and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable this bleed. With the bleed, it's going to put excess um, area around this image. So overall, our bleeds are about 0.1. So what we do, 
And as you can see right now, it bleed types mirror. So all those are a mirror image of what is the file. If you need different size bleeds on each side, you can do that. If you come over to this chain here, you can actually break it, open it so everything's unchained. Now on the top, let's say I want a one inch top bleed, a 0.2 inch bottom bleed, 0.6 left bleed, and no bleed on the right. As you can see, I have that there now, and everything's mirrored. You can also, there's three different types of bleeds. You have a color bleed, a mirror bleed, and a duplication. Duplication is just gonna extend whatever that image color is on the edge. A color bleed is just gonna make it a color. So right now I have it set to white, but you can change it to whatever you want. As you can see, you can do CMYK. So I can do 100% cyan, and that would just became a 100% cyan bleed. Go back to white for that. Actually, no. Uh, the trim box here is something that is outside the bleed. It gives you a few little bit extra trim room. So you can put as much as you want. So we'll just say one inch. And right now it is linked. So as soon as I put in that one, hit enter or tab, everywhere goes to one. Now you can see a one inch white box around that. And again, you can unlink it to do different sizes on each one. Uh, now, down below that is the fold marks. This is for banners. So say you have that white edge there and you need to fold it. You can put these on. And as you can see here on the edges, you have those marks added. I would rather have it in the print area so I know where to fold. So in there, you can go to the little cog here. With that, it gives you a little setting tab window. You can choose the line type. You can do an alternative, a dotted. I guess I didn't change anything. Or a solid line. I usually use solid. Here, you can put the marks in the bleed area, trim area, image area. We want it in the image area. You can't really tell, but right here, you can see that solid black line. If I turn this back to white, you can now see the fold lines that I'm talking about. I'm gonna put all the bleed to one, and there we go. Next up is the grommet tab. In the grommets, you can add grommet marks so for banners. You can, it has sections of top and bottom, left and right. If you click one on, it's linked there, so it'll put both of them on. You can change this by doing spacing or quantity. So if you want to grom it like every 12 inches, it would do that. If you want it every 24 inches, it would do that. This is a small file, so it doesn't really show it. Another thing you do is quantity. Say your thing says, oh, we need five grommets on top. You can just type in five there. I uh, guess max is four we can do here. And it would put five grommets on and have them equal spacing. Go to four then. Um, you can do left and right, same thing. Do quantity or spacing. It's not really adding any, but yeah, see there, it's doing it there. Other things to do, um, you can unlink it so you can only have a right, well, left and uh, top. Oop, that wasn't unlinked. So now you just have that much. The size is. Um, the size of that little mark there is 0.375. You can change that to be bigger or smaller. This puts it in the bleed area, so it's out the side of the image. You can also change your type of mark for your grommets. And here is the offsets. The offsets let you center them. So if I put a one inch bleed, so that's a one inch bleed right there, I would want to half that and do 0.5 which then will put that in the center of that bleed. And the next tab is gonna be marks. Marks help you, this is where you can put a cut line on actually. Uh, so here you can put a label on there, which gives a description of what the job is, depending on what you say. So if I enable that and go into the setup, 
it can have the label space, say what's on that, the order number, company name, customer name, anything in these you want. Yeah. And that will print on the bottom of the image you're working on. The generate cut tile here, well generate tile outline cut paths is how you put a cut line on. When I click this on, you can see this pink line up here. That is our cut line. You have three different options of where you can put that cut line. If you click the drop down box, you have the original image edge, the bleed edge, or the trim box edge. So if I click the bleed edge, it's gonna go on the outside of that bleed. This is technically a label, so I'm going to go back, get rid of, just put a 0.1 bleed on it, get rid of the fold marks, get rid of the grommets, and then go into the marks, and I want that on the original edge. So as you can see, that's the original artwork edge, and then there's my bleed around it. And once you're done with that, you just go over to the print tab. In the print tab, you can do a job name. You can type whatever you want to say what it is, or the software will just use the file's name. Here is the copies. You can say, oh, I want 50 of those there. Uh, this hold for operator makes it so it won't pop up in your queue later. Then once you're done with that, just click submit. Right now, it's going to be ripping it. As you can see, it's having a little waiting. Some files take longer than others. This one was pretty fast. So here I now have 50 of these. That's where it's saying copies, 50. My media is right there saying the test paper CMYK plus white. My size, 3.9972 by 2.2493. What printer it is and what cutter. And then there's my resolution. So, and now if I wanna change anything, Let's say, oh, I actually don't need 50, I need 25. You can double click it, which will open up this job properties. And the job properties right here is copies. I can just change that to 25. This job properties has some basic editing from the job editor, like you can change your media group, media name, the mode, the cutter, you can rotate it. Just know that if you rotate in here, sometimes if you have um, the bleed different, it will change where those bleeds are. As in, let's say the left side here was supposed to be a one inch bleed. As soon as you rotate that, the bottom here at that 90 degree rotation would become one inch. Now, once you're done doing that, you can just click okay. And the copies will change to 25. So here's a print preview of what's gonna, how it's laid out to the printer. As you can see, it's not using very much. It's covering a whole thing. The sheet size is a four foot by eight foot sheet. So it's four feet tall, eight feet long. It is going across the entire eight feet and leaving all this blank space. That is, to me, a waste of material. So you can change your sheet sizes by coming to this cog, clicking it, and here is page sizes. These are ones you can add in. So I have a 28 by 40, so I can click that. And when I click OK, it will then shrink it down to a 28 inch wide by 40 inch tall sheet. That to me is still a little too much. So let's see if I can get it smaller. We can go into the custom here, since I don't have a smaller size in the drop down go into the custom and I can define my own. So I can say, let's say 12 length, 48 in height. And if you're printing on a flatbed, make sure you put press the sheet bubble. Click OK. Click OK. Now, as you can see, it just changed. It's 12 inches by 48. And now I'm just using little two rows of material. If I wanted to, I can go into the copies and fill that up. Right now, these don't have any space between them. I can tell because it looks like that, and from a previous job, I didn't. Way to change that is in placement. If you click this gear here, it gives you placement options. You can have time-based start, area-based start, um, the justification, do you want it centered, do you want it left, do you want it right, printing gutter, offsets, that's in the general. In the options, you have print all rows at a time, best fit, allow rotate, or, and the one I'm looking for is space between copies. 
is the horizontal and vertical. For what we do, we use about a 0.2 of an inch. And as you can see, it's also linked. So if I hit enter or tab, it will put it in both. If you need less space in vertical, you can unlink it and then do that. But I just like 0.2 in both. After that, click OK, and you'll see this kind of space out a little. And now it's good. I would say we're ready to print. Now all I would do is click print now. At this point, it'll start to queue over. There's your percentage bar. And after it's done, it'll be over to your printer.